Hello, I'm David Breeden. I'm the senior minister of First Unitarian Society of Minneapolis, and we are a historically humanist congregation. And this is Coffee and Wisdom, in which we talk a little bit about where humanism and Unitarian Universalism have been in the past, where it is today, and where it might be going. Uh, this week, I'm uh, considering some of the ideas from an article in the Oxford Handbook of Humanism by Dr. James Croft, an ethical culture leader in St. Louis, called What Does It Mean to Practice humanism. And one of the people he mentions in that article um, has a very interesting past, shall we say. Um, but if you look online today it, at Conway Hall, uh, that is a venue in London uh, that uh, is about ethical society, as you see, ethical culture, but also about cultural issues, uh, political, social issues, et cetera. They do have an online presence, and because of COVID, uh, the actual building is, is currently closed, and so there's lots of stuff online if you would like to look that up. So check out Conway Hall in London, and you'll see uh, all, all the interesting things that, that are going on there. The building is named after an American by the name of Moncure Daniel Conway, 1832 to 1907. He was a minister and abolitionist, a, started out as a Methodist, became a Unitarian, and eventually a free thinker. And he founded this institution as a Unitarian congregation in London uh, while he lived there. Uh, and eventually exited Unitarianism and became a free thinker, and eventually the uh, organization became an ethical culture society. Uh, and most of you know that the ethical uh, society or the ethical union uh, is a sister organization in humanism with uh, uh, UU humanism. So let's take a little look today at Moncure D. Conway, probably the most uh, famous humanist that you've never heard of. Uh, so. He it was an American, and he was born into a wealthy Virginia slaveholding family. When the Civil War began, he aided many of his family's enslaved people out of Virginia through the slave state of Maryland and into Ohio, um, and, and specifically to Yellow Springs, Ohio, uh, where uh, there is still a group calling themselves the Conway Settlement to this day. Um, it was the, a place where enslaved people could escape to and be safe in the state of Ohio. Uh, the Conway House uh, is a national park these days, and this is uh, the Conway House in the state of Virginia. You can run by there, and I will show you a plaque from there in a little bit. Um, he was friends with lots of the movers and shakers of Unitarianism and abolitionism in the day. Ralph Waldo Emerson, his most famous friend, but he was also friends of Theodore Parker, a, uh, another Unitarian minister, even more radical in his abolitionism. Uh, and William Lloyd Garrison, who was not Unitarian, but was probably the most prominent abolitionist of his day. He was a firebrand uh, who took his show on the road. And he's probably most famous uh, today for being an advocate for Frederick Douglass and getting Frederick Douglass uh, out and speaking about uh, his uh, enslavement, how he escaped slavery, and to talk against uh, the institution of slavery before the, uh, the Civil War. So uh, this was a very radical group of people that, he, uh, that Conway was involved in at the time. And uh, interestingly, he was from Virginia, a slave state, and, and really the the most important uh, in uh, the linchpin in uh, the Confederacy. He married a Unitarian uh, from Boston, Ellen Davis Dana. Dana, D-A-N-A, -A, is a very famous name in Massachusetts. Uh, um, writers, uh, abolitionists, Unitarian ministers, etc. So uh, they, he married into this very famous Unitarian uh, family. Uh, in 1863, the abolitionists funded Conway's trip to London to convince the UK government that the war was about slavery. If you know the history of the Civil War, you know that England was very uh, nervous about supporting either side during the war, but they needed that cotton that was being produced in the American South that was being blockaded in. Uh, so uh, a lot of people from the UK did support the Southern cause, even though the government was very careful about talking about this. Uh, needless to say, Conway was not um, uh, 
successful in, in this. But he used this excuse to get out of the United States, which he just saw as something that was not going to gel uh, as, as a, a country, was not going to re reach any sort of justice. He did go back and forth over the years, but he never returned to the U.S. to live. Um, and uh, his uh, wife did die eventually in the U.S. Uh, on one of their visits. She is most famous for causing an absolute firestorm. Uh, the first time she visited her Virginia family, and again, this was before the Civil War, uh, with her new husband, um, uh, that was a media event, lots of newspapers around, and on the porch of the plantation, she kissed the head of an enslaved baby. Um, of course, white people didn't touch black people, and it, it caused a firestorm, and the couple had to leave the state uh, to avoid uh, getting tarred and feathered. So it was that kind of uh, violence that, and that kind of very edgy um, action and very dangerous uh, stances that they were involved in. Now, Mr. Conway became a reverend. First, he was a Methodist, and he was raised Methodist, and then he joins the Unitarian fold, and he joins, again, under the influence of the transcendentalism that was very much a part of pre-Civil War America, uh, but he didn't stay there. He continued on into what we nowadays call agnostic, that word had not been invented yet at the time, a super liberal sort of deism, we would call it uh, nowadays, and then eventually into atheism, and then uh, really traces this movement from a Unitarian, very deistic, transcendentalist idea of uh, ultimate reality to this very humanist, uh, very materialist view. And, and so he was really the first Unitarian to take that journey that becomes uh, part of the story of Unitarianism later. And of course, uh, John Dietrich, who uh, became the first humanist minister at First Unitarian Society, also followed that journey uh, across uh, time. Now, Mr. Conway was very influential in the uh, city of London. He became the UK literary agent for Walt Whitman famous American of the day, Mark Twain, Louisa May Alcott, yes, of Little Women, and a Unitarian, of course, and then Elizabeth Cady Stanton, uh, a very famous women's su uh, suffrage advocate. So you see, uh, he's very instrumental in so many things that happened in late 19th and early 20th century um, English-speaking world, but yet uh, most people in on this side of the pond have not heard of him. Also, Conway spoke at the first public rally for women's suffrage in the UK. His wife uh, had passed on at that point. Um, some quotes uh, from Mr. Conway. He was pro absolutely prolific writer. He wrote uh, his memoirs. He wrote a biography of uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, etc. The best thing in every noble dream is the dreamer. He said, that's very transcendentalist. It is the darling delusion of mankind that the world is progressive in religion, toleration, freedom, as it is progressive in machinery. This is the absolute point of, of his life, is resisting that idea that we lived in a progressive time. No, we don't. It, yes, it is uh, technically progressive, but our moral and ethical values uh, have, are not living up to that progressivism, was his claim. All religion and all ethics are summed up in justice. Again, very humanist claim as he's moving toward this um, ethical culture society uh, side of things in his humanism. And in 1865, he wrote, strike out the word white and the word male from our laws, and we shall reach the noblest transformation. Interesting uh, uh, comment about laws and about uh, white supremacy and still a big battle in American culture to this day. This is the plaque that is at the National Park uh, that uh, where his house is. Conway House was the home of Moncure Conway, who freed himself from the dogmas of his culture and became an abolitionist. He is the only descendant of one of our nation's founding fathers to actively lead escaping slaves to freedom, thereby taking the initial steps to correct what was not accomplished in the Constitutional Convention. Uh, by the way, he had forebears who signed both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Conway House makes a significant contribution to understanding the desire to achieve freedom of one's own self-destiny, and it is on the National Underground Railroad Network. Um, and you can visit it uh, today in the state of Virginia, 
But the more fun place is Conway Hall in London, if you get to go there. Um, but during the pandemic, lots of their programming is online, and you will enjoy uh, hearing some of the speakers because it is still cutting-edge thought to this day. So one of the most famous humanists you probably hadn't heard of before, but certainly look into the life of Mr. Conway. First Unitarian Society is available on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can help us keep up humanist programming by going to firstunitarian.org slash donate and also on PayPal. Thank you very much for listening. We will have uh, our assembly at 1030 a.m. Uh, on Sunday at Central Time uh, when I'll be talking about many of these issues that are still very much alive to this day. Thanks for listening today.